Greetings Matanistas. Sweet and sour pork, lemon chicken, orange beef, all the sorts of dishes you normally associate with Chinese food. Now, sorry to disappoint some of you, but those tend to be adapted Chinese foods. Call them Chinglish foods. Tonight though, I happen to be in China, in Hangzhou in Eastern China, and we are going to try something that is traditional as it comes in China, even though it's not actually from this part of the country. It's called a hot pot, it's a Mongolian hot pot, and it is the first of my three or four visits to hot pot restaurants of different styles in this vlog called The Hot Pots of China. So yes, yet again we're in a commercial area, seems to be a very popular thing to do in China to eat in shopping centres and malls. But I don't care about the location as long as the food is good, and neither should you Matanistas. Anyway, as I said, this is not a dish from this part of the country. The food here tends to be quite sweet and light. Not my favourite type of Chinese food, although I have eaten well here. Sorry I've not been able to bring you much of what I've had because I've been busy working. Anyway, on to today's food, and we are trying a Mongolian hot pot from the north of China. And yes, Beijing would have been a more apt location to film this vlog, but we are where we are. And of course, the other videos I'm gonna film in this hot pot series will actually be filmed in their sort of natural traditional location in Sichuan province. Anyway, there are a lot of different types of hot pots that you can eat in China, but this is the mildest one you can actually have. So those of you who aren't spice merchants should be a bit more comfortable with this one. Well, feast your eyes on this, Matanistas. I am gonna have a good time with all this meat tonight. This is our bridge team, the PD Times bridge team from the famous Mr. Ho, who's uh, sporting bottles of Qingtao beer. I don't know whether one's stronger than the others, but I know he likes the strong stuff. Thankfully, Mr. Fu is here to explain exactly how this works. And even more importantly, even though the restaurant doesn't stock red wine, we will be able to take a slurp because they didn't mind us bringing our own. I've no idea when they've charged a little bit for that, but in my experience in China, it's never very much, if anything. This is your dip. Okay. Can you see the colors? Yeah. So what, what's inside the dip? Sesame sauce, but they have every restaurant has their own recipe. Basically, special made for this hot pot. Okay. Having selected the wine myself, I'd better have a quick slurp just for quality control purposes, of course. I think that will go down in three minutes at least. So there was a little tray of condiments here. The chilies, some chili paste, yeah. coriander. Coriander, yes. And that looks like a bit of tripe over there. Yeah, that is. That's traditional Beijing style. Okay. So Mr. Fu, can you explain to the viewers how this works? Uh, basically, you put meat in, into the hot pot, like five seconds. Then it's cooked and dipped into your dip. It has special taste, but the meat, the, the mutton, is all their own fine. Uh, okay. Every restaurant has different sort of mutton. Okay, and this is prime mutton, is it? Yes, yeah, very prime. <laughs> Excellent. And as you all know, Muttonistas, you cannot eat a bit of prime mutton. 
go to get it. There are some already in there. Ah. Now, I don't recommend having this rare particularly. You want to cook it through. Okay. So having cooked it, and I recommend cooking it just to the point where the meat loses its red colour. You don't want to leave it cooking in there for ages because it will become a bit tough and stringy. Dunk it in the dip, which has been thoroughly garlic and chilli up in my case, although you don't have to have all that. And in case you meat molesters don't think that is enough meat, take a look at what else is around. Frozen. 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 Yeah. Mutton again. Yeah, everything is mutton. Everything is mutton. Yeah. This is fresh. Okay. Fresh cuts. Okay. So looks like this might stay in the fridge for some time. Okay. This is totally uh, fresh. And is there a price difference? Uh, uh, yes, this is much more... Uh, the fresh meat is more expensive, as you'd expect. <laughs> And one of the secrets of this dish, beautifully simple, is that the broth that we cook the meat in and my dip gets progressively more meaty and juicy as we go on, which will lead to a crescendo flowing all around my mouth. So much in Easter's, I'm going to crack on because we've got some heavy work to do here and come back to you when the broth has become thoroughly meated up as my little bowl will be. And of course, normally, my section of the table, because I'm less good with chopsticks than they are, is bound to be the messiest part. So what, what's going on here? What's being put in? It's, it's uh, Chinese dumpling, yeah. but it's made from egg. Okay. Normally, we don't have dumplings with that, but this is especially for uh, Okay. Okay, so it's an expected bonus condiments or side dishes have arrived. I've just told you about these egg dumplings, or Mr. Foo has, but a couple of other dishes have arrived. Okay, we have something akin to sauerkraut here, yep. pickled cabbage. Uh, sweet potato, but you'll never see sweet potato like this. Okay, and do we do we dunk it in the hot pot or do we just eat it as it no, no, is? No, you have to dunk, dunk it. Okay. Everything is going into the hot pot. Except for the... That, no, okay, that goes in as well. Wow, okay. Normally, this is to help you to find... If you find the uh, mutton a little bit more fat, mm -hmm. this will help you to release the fat. Ah, okay. Not that I ever object to meat with a high fat content, of course. <laughs> and is this dish at all seasonal? Is it something eaten all year or a special? This is all year. Okay. If you have the resource of the uh, mutton, the whole year is on. Okay. But it's very popular during winter. Notice, Martinistas, I'm letting them get on with putting all the stuff in the hot pot because I don't know what goes in when. But what I do know is this is very thirsty work. So I'm going to have another slurp and then get on with tanning this meat and the dumplings. Now, the dumpling was absolutely gorgeous. Now to try this cabbage. I'm a big fan of sauerkraut when I'm in Central Europe. So let's see how it tastes there. <laughs> Not as pickled and sour as the German or Polish versions, but still pretty tasty. And it has to be said, as they did describe, it does balance off the fatty meat quite nicely. Okay. So, this is go. This goes uh, later. Later. Okay. After we finish. Halfway through the meal, and wow, my dip is getting so incredibly meaty. It's like my mouth is swimming in mutton fat, fried mutton fat, 
And I've also noticed that the levels in my dip have gone down a lot more quickly than everybody else. Is that because I soak it up in too much juice and dunk it in too heavily? Or, more likely, because I'm eating more meat than anybody else? Uh, already ordered. Ah, we've ordered a new dip. Because if you look at mine here, and Mr. Foo's there, quite a difference. Okay, the conclusion is that it's because I've eaten more meat than anybody else. Anyway, in for a penny, in for a pound. And if you're wondering what we're drinking, it's a Spanish mencia from Galicia called El Ladron. I thought this style of wine would go quite nicely and cut through the fat. Oh wow, some prime tripe here. I like tripe. Chinese people love their offal as well. I know some of you are a bit squeamish about that. But as they say in any good sporting event, you've got to be in to win. So if you come to one of these places, don't be squeamish, try it. Oh. Mushrooms and some more dumplings. Yeah. I think this is called tree fungus or wood fungus. Yes. Oh, another dip's arrived and Mr. Fu is mixing up the medicine. I'm just going to poke around it because one thing I really like are these enoki mushrooms. They go well in any sort of stew, hot pot. Anyway, Mr. Fu is mixing up my dip so that the oil, the chilies and the sesame paste all blend together nicely because I made the mistake of just dunking stuff in willy-nilly the first time round. More tea, please. And as is always the case, Matanistas, it's such a pleasure to dine in China at Chinese restaurants with Chinese friends. You know you're getting the real deal, an authentic meal, and they're ordering the right stuff. That is not to say that you can't come to these places on your own speaking yeah. English, it's just a bit more tricky. So some variety, some beef is going in. The frozen meat isn't actually mutton, it's beef. And this goes very quickly. You can pull them out. Is that because it's your favourite that it yes. goes quickly? Uh, well, that really has gone straight in and straight out. I must admit, uh, I don't like anything overcooked. Well, you know me, I'm a tartar man. But, wow, that really is sort of quickly blanched until the colour turns grey. And I'm not sure that my bowl is supposed to be quite as loaded with meat as this, but... Now, how to eat this without spilling it on my t-shirt? I'm going to have to lean over. I'm obviously a mutton man, but that beef is the business. And at the end of each meal, my team have asked me, do you want anything more or drink? I've usually politely declined, but I think tonight I'm going to ask for more And what's just arrived here? Uh, mutton. Mutton. Any different from the mutton we had before? Uh, yeah. This is a called a baby mutton. Baby mutton, okay. Here. Shoulder of baby mutton. Uh, here, here. Uh, ribs, mutton ribs, okay. Now, if you do decide to order the tripe, Mr. Fu says seven up and eight down, and then it's actually cooked properly. So, it's seven up, eight down, you can have it now. Okay, jolly good. And in case you all think I'm spinning you a yarn or telling you massive pork pies here, I do practice what I preach. There's the tripe and I love it. Very <laughs> tender and not at all rubbery. <laughs> what is going in now? This, I believe, is the fresh premium mutton. Tell us. 10 to 15 seconds. Okay. <coughs> It's a medium well to medium, I'd say. Or maybe medium well, actually. Now, finally, the last plate of meat we have here, the premium cut, the mutton from the belly, cooked, as we said, for 15 seconds. 
Not a thick cut, but deliciously rich in meaties. Mutton Easters, that is the money shop for today. And when the stock gets a little bit too concentrated and thick, we just add a bit more hot water and then it'll reduce a little bit, but will still leave us with a pretty meaty broth. And finally, in goes the bed. I have to say that looks a bit like lettuce some of it, but there are some more traditional leafy greens in there. Ah yes, Chinese bai sai, white cabbage. Now those are the ones I like, I don't know what they're called. Again, the Chinese like their vegetables to be reasonably crisp and not soggy and overcooked, so these won't go in a minute longer than they need to. Okay, veg time. Now whilst I suppose it's one of your five a day, this is not going to balance off the meal in the slightest. Not only because I've eaten so much meat, but because it'll be dripping in the meat juices of the broth and my dip. <laughs> but nevertheless, crunchy, crispy, meaty, a delicious way to end the meal. Some Chinese bread has arrived, but I'm so stuffed with meat that I don't think I'll bother. Wow, 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 wow. My mouth is still dancing with meaty juices. I'm stuffed now, absolutely stuffed. Can't eat anymore, but what a great experience and meal this was. I was going to divide this video up into three segments in one video, but there was so much going on here that I've taken an editorial decision to make this a video in its own right, as I will do for the other two types of hot dog. So, Metanistas, it's time to love you and leave you again. I'm leaving Hangzhou tomorrow, but we will be grazing in fresh pastures in Sichuan province of all places, which really is the home of hot pots in China. So until then, keep liking, keep sharing, keep subscribing. Please tell all your friends about me. But most of all, don't forget, you can't be the bit of mutton.